economy encounters the body of technology, every business, every industry in the economy comes up against the possibilities of this new technology and encounters it and asks itself, what can I do with the new technology? And as this new body of technology is changing over decades, it has to keep asking itself that question. And something really interesting happens. Again, it's not a business that adopts the technology so much as an industry that creates yet new business processes and new business technologies out of the body of technology and what it had originally. So the movie industry encounters computation around 1970, roughly 60s, 70s, on into the 80s. And the things that the movie industry has available, which is photography, of course, wide-angle lenses, uh, uh, ca motion capture, green screens, blue screens, whatever they're called, that comes together with the existence of computer algorithms, and specially made computer algorithms, and the result over two or three decades is not an adoption, it's new technologies or a whole new sub-industry. The sub-industry of, of CGI, computer graphic imaging, uh, whatever you care to call it, has two or three different names. And in due course, around 2009, we wind up with Avatar. And all of that is still in the making. So think of these bodies of technology sweeping in, and those bodies of technology are creating little flashes of light all over the economy as new technologies are being made by the combination of what exists already in the new body of technology. And it's not as if they're being adopted again by the economy. The economy is remaking itself always anew. Its character is changing always anew as that process happens and sweeps right across the economy. And this is continuous. In our day, it's never ending. So that leads me to a question, or a natural question, if the economy changes in character or changes qualitatively when these huge bodies of technology wash in, what change in character do we have right now? What is underway? I want to pose uh, something, or at least give you my answer to this. We all might have our own answers, but this is my answer. It's still a little bit too early uh, for nanotech to make some difference. Um, I, maybe Steve Jervison could uh, correct me on this, but it hasn't deeply changed the character of the economy yet, nor has genomic or proteomic or genetic engineering or synthetic biology and so on. The thing that has been changing our economy for about five decades is obviously computation, or if you like, the whole family of digital technologies. This family is huge. It's not that there's the computer and then the internet and then the cloud. It's think of all the possible algorithms, hundreds of thousands, probably millions, all the devices, all the processors, all the storage devices, all the protocols, all the routers and switches and optical transmission abilities, all these dedicated satellites and so on, hundreds of thousands, it's like a language. And business is selecting words and phrases from that language to combine in new ways. So I like to think of the economy this way, or at least let me give you an example of the difference that this is making. 20 years ago, I can remember it well, you'd walk into an airport, you had a paper ticket, you'd put it down on the desk, there was somebody behind the desk who would process you, and a little bit of computation, very localized, would happen. That isn't happening anymore, or not very much. Now you go into an airport, you have a card, a frequent flyer card or a credit card, you put it into a machine, and very shortly, a few seconds afterwards, you get a boarding pass or you get a luggage uh, label or something like that. 
The interesting thing is what happens, though, what isn't seen. And I maintain what isn't seen is, and I can only guess at this, but it's something like this. I put in my card, and immediately what happens is a whole series of conversations that's happening somehow unseen and underground. An enormous series of functionalities triggering other functionalities. So the airline is alerted. Not only is the airline alerted, but all its functionalities are alerted. Possibly knowing my seat number, there's recomputation of where the loading, the passenger loading is going to be in the plane. TSA is alerted, no doubt, and that's alerting other things, and no doubt NSA is um, alerted as well. I come from Northern Ireland. I visit Arab big countries once in a while. I worked in a US Soviet think tank. I can assure you that there is a huge conversation going on that makes life either easy or difficult for people. But what I want to, the point I want to make is that the moment something in the standard physical sphere goes into this other realm of the digital, it's triggering a series of executables triggering other executables remotely and a huge ongoing conversation that might never stop. It's like Charlie getting onto the MTA and never get it, getting off again. I don't know when it stops or it ever stops. So I think of the physical economy as being above the ground and underground. There's this massive root system of an unseen economy, a second economy, I'm not quite sure what to call it. David Galerter might want to call it a mirror economy. Brent and I were wondering what we should call this, but it's a vast system of interconnected functions triggering other functions that we don't see in the digital arena, and it's spreading and deepening. For every acre of aspen trees that you might see around here, there's roughly 10 miles of underground root system, throwing off little shoots, interconnecting, possibly talking. I don't quite know what happens in root systems. I want to change the metaphor here and say, OK, we're thinking of the physical economy up above that's visible. We know what happens. It's human beings. It's tactile. It's machines. And then there's this digital economy, the second economy, this unseen economy below the ground. But if you look up close, there's something slightly more subtle happening than that. And that is that the digital, sorry, the physical economy, every time it enters the digital part underground, so to speak, it does so by sensing something. You put in your card, the card is sensed. You photograph something digitally, say for CGI purposes, making movies. Somehow that's sensed by pixels and then sent into this digital arena for further processing. And then it comes out of the digital arena having been processed and executes something in the physical world. My boarding pass shoots out. Other things happen, no doubt, along the way. There is a definition, when I started to realize that, I began to, it reminded me of a definition of biology or biological intelligence. So biologists have a very simple definition of cognitive intelligence for rather primitive organisms. A primitive organism shows intelligence if it can sense its environment and in some primitive way react appropriately. Now, three or four hundred million years ago, jellyfish, multicellular organisms, appeared. They have a, musc a primitive muscular system, and they did not develop a central nervous system like we have. They developed a layer of neurons or a neural layer right throughout the jellyfish. The jellyfish is able to sense its environment sense where the concentration of food is higher, this neural layer processes that, 
and then sends automatic reflexes back to the musculature system that moves it in the right direction. So what I want to posit is that in the economy, we are developing something like a neural layer, an autonomous neural layer. This economy, this second economy, is conversational, it's ongoing, it's self-configuring, it is vast, it is autonomous. In computer language, you'd say it's concurrent. Many of these things are happening in parallel. And there is no central brain to this. It's a neural layer. So I want to add something to what David Christian said earlier. We go through successive qualitative changes, and every so often, we reach a threshold, or what in physics you would call a phase change. And what I want to suggest to you is that we have, as human beings, and this is adding to David's talk, we have created, and he showed you some examples of primates with sticks and, and simple tools, we have created a vast system of technology that is evolving by creating new elements out of existing elements that is ever evolving, that's creating itself out of itself with the agency of us as human beings, that every so often sweeps by and changes the economy qualitatively. And I want to put out maybe a debatable or outrageous thought that the change that I'm suggesting that there's a neural layer going on and deepening in the digital arena beneath our physical economy. I've reckoned that it's doubling roughly every 22 years. It's adding another economy unseen, an autonomous neural layer. And I think this is a remarkable qualitative shift. I was thinking this morning, is this the biggest change we're going to see in our lifetimes? Yeah. Is this the biggest change in the economy since the Industrial Revolution? Yeah. Is it the biggest change ever in the economy? Yes, absolutely. This is giving us a second layer of intelligence. In the physical economy, we have human physical intelligence. We are smart. Everybody in the room is smart. <laughs> and. Humans are very smart. We're the smartest primates, as you've just heard. And we have this remarkable, consensual, collective intelligence that David Christian was talking about. I want to posit that something very, very deep has just happened in the last 15 or 20 years. And that is that we're getting a second intelligence, an autonomous intelligence, that's being created digitally beneath the physical layer. I don't know if it's malign or benign or wonderful or out to get us. I am neutral on all of that, and that's kind of late night bar stuff if you can find me later. <laughs> and believe me, I'm Irish and I'm up for conversations. But I want to posit that we are seeing a second layer and that this is a threshold. The economy is crossing it in our day. There is no upper bound. There is no time limit. This will go on and on and on as long as we human beings are around and it, and it doesn't get out of control. So I leave you with that possibly interesting or possibly terrifying thought. Thank you. Thank you very much.